Hey, how's it going, YouTube? Time for another cryptocurrency video. Um, today let's talk about Bitcoin and the tax man. Uh, I know we've all heard about IRS using uh advanced software to locate people who are tax cheats, at least according to the IRS. Um, let's see. Here we have this article in um. Uh, from the Daily Beast, the IRS now has a tool to unmask Bitcoin tax cheats, according to the IRS. Okay, so the article says you can use Bitcoin, but you can't hide from the tax man. At least that's the hope of the International Revenue of the Internal Revenue Service, which has purchased specialist software to track those using Bitcoin, according to a contract obtained by the Daily Beast. The document highlights how law enforcement isn't only uh, concerned with criminals accumulating Bitcoin from selling drugs or hacking targets, but also those who use the currency to hide wealth or avoid paying taxes. The IRS claimed that only 802 people declared Bitcoin losses or profits in 2015, clearly fewer than the actual number of people trading the cryptocurrency especially as more investors dip into the world of cryptocurrencies and the value of Bitcoin punches past the $4,000 mark. Maybe lots of Bitcoin traders didn't realize the government expects to collect tax on their digital earnings. Or perhaps some thought that they would be able to get away with stockpiling Bitcoin thanks to the perception that, that the cryptocurrency is largely anonymous. The purpose of this acquisition, that is the software, is to help us trace the movement of money through the Bitcoin economy, a section of the contract reads. The Daily Beast obtained the document through the Freedom of Information Act. The contractor in this case is Chain Analysis, a startup offering its reactor tool to visualize, track, and analyze Bitcoin transactions. Chain analysis users include law enforcement agencies, banks, and regulatory entities. The software can allow can follow Bitcoin as it moves from one wallet to another, and eventually to an exchange where the Bitcoin user will likely cash out into dollars or another currency. This is the point law enforcement could issue a subpoena to the exchange and figure out who is really behind the Bitcoin. Um, all government agencies who have traditionally needed to follow the money now need uh, to also be able to follow digital currencies, says Jonathan Levine, uh, co-founder of Chain Analysis. This is necessary to identify and obtain evidence on individuals using Bitcoin to launder money or conceal income as part of tax fraud or other federal crimes, the, I the IRS contract notes. The document also mentions the IRS use of WorldCheck, a database on companies, organizations, and businesses uh, designed to provide insight into financial crime or those who might be behind it. WorldCheck although has uh, issues sometimes using uh, Wikipedia as a source. Okay, Public records show the IRS Pay chain chain analysis over eighty eight thousand seven hundred dollars since two thousand fifteen for its services. Of course, just because the IRS has an easier time of tracing Bitcoin today doesn't mean that criminals won't adapt. Oh, criminals! Those who are actively seeking to avoid tax, especially large amounts of tax, will move on to the next cryptocurrency that is not that is not susceptible to the current tracking tools. Alan Woodward, a computer uh, science professor at the University of Surrey, uh, with a focus on cybercrime and cryptography, told the Daily Beast, some criminals already use alternatives such as Zcash or Monero, both of which provide more privacy uh, features over Bitcoin. The IRS uh, acknowledged the request for a comment, but did not provide a response. 
the IRS has approached uh, Bitcoin, Bitcoin tax evasion in a more controversial way in the uh, controversial ways in the past. In a legal order filed last November, the IRS demanded the identities of all users of the U, of the U of the Bitcoin exchange Coinbase over the uh, three year period. The case is ongoing. Uh, let's move to this other article uh, in Fortune magazine. Everyone knows about the about the uh, lawsuit, ongoing lawsuit between Coinbase and the IRS. They first started off asking for all of the users, but they have been able to negotiate. This is this is where the case li uh, stands now. There are indications, though, the IRS is focusing only on bigger fish. For instance, the, uh, in the agency's ongoing legal battle with the popular digital uh, currency exchange. Coinbase, the IRS, uh, recently agreed to limit its request for customer uh, records only to accounts with transactions over uh, $20,000. Nevertheless, the IRS's use of chain analysis software is likely to make some Bitcoin owners uneasy. Meanwhile, on Bitcoin forums, some users have expressed resentment against exchanges like Coinbase, Kraken, and Mt. Gox. For allegedly storing wallets in such a way that analytic companies like Chain Analysis or Bitseer can identify individual users. The forum chatter also shows some Bitcoin users are thinking of switching to other digital currencies like Monero that are harder to trace. Finally, the existence of tools like Chain Analysis doesn't mean Bitcoin users can't be anonymous. Those who wish to keep their identity concealed can do so by maintaining their own wallet and avoiding uh, exchanges that collect customer information. Right, so that basically uh, provides a solution. Just avoid, uh, if, if you're really concerned about it, just avoid Coinbase. Although, I'm, um, I'm not particularly concerned about, about this. I mean, I have not, uh, I'm not doing transactions of, of over twenty five thousand, over twenty thousand dollars a piece, so I'm not particularly worried about it. I mean, if really one, if one really wants to get into the issue of Bitcoin and taxes, uh, there is a video here um, called Bitcoin and Taxes. Uh, you're, this this gentleman uh, in Texas, who's a who's a accountant or a CPA or something, uh, he actually does tell you. Uh, what the IRS stance on Bitcoin is, you you have to uh, basically record every, every transaction that you make with Bitcoin. I'm not I, I'm not down with reporting every uh, uh, cup of coffee or uh, meal that I buy with my Bitcoin. You know, I'm not particularly down with that. But if if it's a game that you want to play, you you can do that. Um, my particular stance on on this issue is. Well, I'm not giving advice or anything, but I'm not particularly worried about it. I mean, the, I mean, there is no, uh, no law that requires one to file or to pay taxes to the to the IRS. Um, here's another video, which I which I discovered last year, that explains this in detail. Let's take a look. There is no law. And to date, nobody has been able to show that there is a law for the average American citizen working day in and day out to pay an income tax. But we, the People Foundation for Constitutional Education, put a full page ad in the USA Today on July 7th, 2000. And within the body of that ad was a $50,000 challenge for anyone that could show the law. And to me, $50,000 is a lot of money. So I went after that. And did the research based on the fact that I thought, let's put this baby to bed. I'm hearing all these rumors. You know, I'm going to kill two birds with one stone. I'll answer these people's questions that are asking me. And then I'll win this $50,000. And, you know, based on the research that I did throughout the year 2000 and that I'm still doing, I have not found that law. I've asked uh, Congress. We've asked a lot of people in the IRS, the IRS commissioners, helpers. They can't answer because if they answer, the American people are going to know that this whole thing is a fraud. There is no law. There is no law that requires the average American worker in the private sector to pay a direct unapportioned tax 
on their labor and compensation for services. There is no law. I really expected that, of course, there's a law that you can point to in the law book, the code, that requires you to file a tax return. Of course there is. I mean, I don't know what it is right then as, we, as he was speaking to me, but sure. So naively, I agreed to go off and research it and get back to him. Three and a half months later, I was at that point where I couldn't find the statute that clearly made a person liable, uh, at least not me and uh, most people I know, and I had no, no choice in my mind except to, to resign. I had to leave the IRS because I presented uh, evidence that I had accumulated indicating that the agency was violating the law and violating people's rights. And I asked the agency for a response to my sincere concerns. And the answer I got was that they would not respond to my concerns and that they would uh, provide me with the paperwork necessary to tender my resignation. You can look through the statutes and look for the law that requires you to pay. And when you do that, you can't identify a law that requires the average person in America who earns a wage and works in private business to pay an income tax. American citizens, along with the foundation, have been asking the IRS to specifically provide them with the, the underlying legal foundation upon which they administer and enforce the personal income tax laws in our country. At the national level, when people would attempt to contact somebody of a much higher authority, say the, cons uh, the commissioner, same kind of thing, uh, they, wouldn't get, they would get answers that were in effect non-answers. You have to understand that an agency which will unlawfully impose a tax that doesn't exist is not going to care if we the people don't know what our rights are they're not going to tell us if americans just learned that the irs was actually knowingly deceiving them that that enough that would be enough for them to rise up and put a stop to it 100 percent of what is collected is absorbed solely by interest on the federal debt all individual income tax revenues are gone before one nickel is spent on the services taxpayers expect from government. People have been told, you know, that you need this income tax system to fund government, which is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, my question is, well, if that's true, how did we fund government from 1776 to 1913? The main purpose of the income tax is not to raise revenue, but to redistribute wealth and to control society. And a lot of people uh, might say, well, gee, if there wasn't an income tax, what would happen to education? They don't understand uh, that education is paid for, for the most part, out of state and local taxes, your property tax. People might say, well... Okay, see? <laughs> so here we have a bunch of ex-IRS agents and uh, other representatives who are, who are clearly telling you there's no, there's no requirement to file, there's no requirement to, to, to pay uh, taxes. but uh most people believe that they do uh have a have a have an obligation to pay for education and pay for the fire department and all that stuff you know but as the gentleman just said does it come out of your income taxes um in fact what is what is the irs the irs is not uh, a federal government agency Let's look at this uh, this article real quick, and uh, the uh, from the Investment uh, Watch blog clearly says the IRS is not a U.S. government agency. They are slave handlers. Here are some here are some factual here are some truthful facts that most people do not know, but should. The IRS is not a U.S. government agency. It is an agency of the IMF, the International Monetary Fund. Uh, diversified metal products versus IRS et al. Et cetera, blah, blah, blah. Okay, point number two, the IMF, uh, the International Monetary Fund, is an agency of the UN, according to Black's Law Dictionary, 6th edition, page 816. So, yeah, the education, education, uh, money for the fire department, uh, money for the police department, all that comes out of uh, your property taxes, which you pay uh, twice a year to the county, as I understand it. Uh, the uh, money for the funding for building roads and stuff comes from uh, the gasoline tax that you pay on uh, on your on your gallons of 
uh, of petrol, of gasoline that you buy at the at the gas station. Your your income tax is not is not where it comes from. the 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 income tax goes directly. The, the income tax that people pay every April in the United States goes directly to the International Monetary Fund. So you have a right to protect yourself from the from the international bankers who are stealing your income tax uh, money every year. Um, so if you want to, uh, so if you want to play that game. There are things that you can do. For example, uh, the the uh, the uh, the IRS makes certain presumptions that it assumes are true. So this is what you call an affidavit of corporate denial. Now, what is it? The Sixteenth Amendment to the Constitution. Uh, now, the the uh, the IRS will tell you that uh, income taxes are justified by the 16th Amendment to the Constitution. The 16th Amendment to the Constitution says uh, it, 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 it uh, says something about, about income. Now, income is defined by Black's Law Dictionary as basically capital gains made from corporate activity. Well, we're not, we are not a corporation. So, but the, however, the IRS assumes that you are. So, you file with the IRS an affidavit of corporate denial. And the the uh, IRS presuming that you are number one, a taxpayer, as defined, that you have consented voluntarily to participate in excess in excise tax, that you are a taxpayer. It assumes that you are an officer of a federal corporation, which you are not. That you are engaged in federal franchises, trade or business. That you are a trustee, transferee of the U.S. government as described in uh, this statute or this code. That you have a taxpayer identification number, etc. In fact, if we go further, this is a very interesting document. I'll, I'll put it in, in, in the description. There are a bunch of cases where people argue this and they were successful. Um, right, so, right, so the IRS presumes that you agreed to be treated as an officer of a federal corporation. Why? Because all governments are corporations created by usage and common consent, etc. blah, blah, blah. No, none of which is true in, in the case of most people. So, I mean, the whole, the, the whole tax thing is fraud. <laughs> it is a huge fraud perpetuated on the, on the uh, American people. So I'm not really going to worry about this. Uh, all that all that much i'm going to leave these documents in the in, in the description for anyone who wants to look at them uh in my case in general just while we're talking about this i am uh i reside much of the year in a foreign country so in my case i can use this uh the form is called the form 2050 it's a foreign foreign earned income the IRS assumes that it presumes that it can uh, tax income worldwide. That's what most people tell you because of FATCA. But I can file this form uh, because I reside in a residence which is provided by the company that I work for. This one, here we are. This is what you call a bona fide residency test. And that is that you, that you, maintain a residency uh, a residence someplace else so i usually live in quarters that are furnished by the employer so this would so this would apply to me anyway so i'm i'm not, I'm not terribly worried about the about the issue of taxes because i know i know that it's, it's all a fraud and 
this is uh, this is how I, I I plan to respond. So I'm going to end the video. I'm going to end the video here, and uh, I'm going to leave all the links in in the description. And uh, yeah, so until next time, you team, peace.